Welcome back to the Gen Z Speaks podcast. With me today, my usual co-hosts, the future of computer science and technology, Janish Thanky. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good today. And last but not least, the soon-to-be business mogul, Matt Gutierrez. How you doing? Doing great, brother. Doing great. Just grinding away as usual, right? How about you? That's that's good. Yeah. I mean, same, same, almost ready to graduate. Me and Janish are graduating in three weeks, which is uh, intimidating for me, at least. I don't know if, if you feel excited, Janish, but I'm I'm a little scared. I don't know. Yeah, it does feel like a new chapter in life, but, you know, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what happens in the future. I mean, school's all we've known all <laughs> our lives. And for the first time, we're not going to be in school. So it's a pretty big life adjustment. I don't know. At least for me, it I agree. Be. I agree. But in a way, I feel like, you know, me and you were both kind of worked, you know, done jobs and stuff. So we'll be more used to, you know, adapting to the work life and, you know, whatever we want to do in the future, whatever projects we want to do. I hope so. <clears throat> I hope so. Uh, how was your guys' weekend so far? Cool. I just chill, dude. It's been, you know, doing work, just chilling. Yeah. Yo, bro. Okay. Let's talk about fucking Dr. Phil. Okay. So, <laughs> On Friday, uh, Friday night, I, I work at the USC Center for Political Future, and they were um, they were hosting this climate event. Um, you know, it was like uh, it, it was to discuss climate change, and they hosted a bunch of experts and some CEOs from some companies. And my coworker, he asked me if he wanted me to if he he was going to dinner at this guy's place. His name is Frank Luntz. He's a very prominent. Uh, he's a very prominent uh, American pollster and consultant, and um, he basically, um, it, it, I don't know if you guys know, have you, have you guys seen Vice, the movie Vice about Dick Cheney? Mm-hmm. So he was, they talked about him in the movie because he was really influential during the Bush administration because he, he's a communications guy and his job was to sell things like the Iraq war to the people and to use messaging that made it seem friendlier or like more appealing. He wrote a whole document which discussed words to use regarding the Iraq war, a whole dictionary of words to use for politicians to sell the war. He's the guy responsible for changing the term global warming to climate change to make it sound less scary. So he literally is responsible. Like the reason why we call global warming climate change is because this guy in the early late 1990s and early 2000s started, he worked for a lot of Republican candidates. And so uh, he started to use terminology that was less scary. And he's just a communications guy that's worked for a lot of politicians, primarily Republicans. And uh, in recent years, he's kind of been on bad terms with the Republican Party because he's very anti-Trump. But nonetheless, He's made a lot of money from consulting, political consulting and communication consulting for these candidates all around the world. And um, apparent, so this, my friend, my coworker said, do you want to go to his house for dinner? And I said, uh, initially I said, I can't go because I, I actually had to do something, but it got canceled. And so I ended up going and right as I walk in, there's like these television cameras in the house. And I was assuming there's, it's, it's going to be dinner, right? And I thought it was just going to be like a 30, 30 people dinner, 20 people dinner party. And then there's television cameras. And right as I walk in, there's like baseball cards everywhere. There's like historical stuff all around. And um, as I talk to people around there, it turns out that he invited the Trojan Democrats, the USC, the, the Democratic Club, and then the Republican Club. And what to, to debate ideas, to debate uh, each other. And I'm not part of both. I'm an independent, right? So like I was just there and uh, he like he put the Democrats on one side, the Republicans on the other side. And he started like talking about he teaches a class at USC in the summer. It's taught in Washington, D.C. And he started pitching students a class. But as he was talking, he was like, I have a special guest today. And <laughs> Uh, Dr. Phil walks in. Dr. Phil, I mean, I'm sure most people know who Dr. Phil is. He's like this psychologist, right, on TV that that gives, what is it? Would you say it's free therapy or what is it? What does he do? He just like counsels advice. people. He yeah. gives yeah. people advice Familial on Familial advice. Yeah. He's kind very of. popular, right. Um, funny enough, Matt, we've actually been on the Dr. Phil show yeah. uh, three, four years ago in high school. In our AP psychology class, uh, we went uh, for a live taping of the Dr. Phil show. But uh, so, yeah, Kelly, too. 
Yeah, Megan Kelly was on it, the TV anchor. So uh, I'm, I'm I'm going on a rant, but okay. So what happened? Doctor Phil shows up. Everybody's surprised. They're shocked. They're like, "What's going on?" And it turns out it's an actually a taping show for Doctor Phil. So the whole episode is going to be on Doctor Phil. It was I learned a lot of stuff about about the how the media works in that little moment because all they're trying to sell, man, is like division and and they're trying to like uh, sell drama so apparently the 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 democrats here and the republicans the the two clubs don't get along i mean that's not surprising and they have like very like personal attacks a long history of personal attacks so one of the kids from the trojan republicans called one of the girls who was part of the democratic club a, a murderous whore and, and i apologize for this language but that's what he called her not during the taping event but before because apparently one of them got an abortion and he labeled that thing which is obviously a disgusting term to use and then apparently dude one of the kids uh for the who who's part of the republican club said that he almost got canceled by his fellow co-workers at usc they filed a petition against him because he used some language that was offensive and he almost got fired from his job by his coworkers by filing an online petition. So the premise of the taping was that Frank Luntz, this pollster and Dr. Phil were trying to say that there's a lot of polarization on college campuses, which there is, and that, you know, we should listen first and, and really try to understand the other side and really uh, feel the other side. We did a weird thing at this taping band. So Dr. Phil in the middle of it, he made us uh, so he made the Republicans and Democrats face each other and just look each other in the eye for two minutes and not say a word. And we did this for like two other people. And it was actually a good exercise because like when you see somebody in the eye for two minutes and not say a word and then he would pose us his questions. Imagine this person if they just lost someone in their life or like he would like, you know, post these like really like, you know, imagine if this person uh, just lost uh, uh you know, their financial well-being, imagine whatever. And then like, uh, and then they would tap. And at the end of this little thing, person, they would, uh, he would say person A, tap person B and say either one of three things. I trust you. I don't trust you. And I don't care to answer. And then like, you would touch their shoulder and say, I trust you. I don't trust you or whatever. And then, um, yeah, man, it, it was, I, I swear to you, I did not know what I walked myself into because it's 7 30 PM. My primary thing for going to this dinner was uh, free food right <laughs> and <laughs> dinner was never served i never got food they didn't serve <laughs> any dinner so i'm fasting and i'm stuck because i can't leave the cameras are rolling i don't want to be the guy who <laughs> rolls right and rolls <laughs> past the cameras and it's 9 p.m and i still haven't drank any water had any food and i broke my fast at like 9 20 9 30 i drank water after like uh like 19 20 hours and i didn't have any food until 12 30 a.m like when I got back to my house. But um, so, yeah, the interesting thing about this guy's house, Frank Luntz, is he's a history buff. Did he's you participate rich. real quick? What's that? Did you participate in like the tapping? Like, I trust you don't. Yeah, we had to. He made us do it. All of us <laughs> did it. So, so were you like on the Democrat side or the Republican? Side? So I, I'm an independent, right? So he didn't have any seats for independence. He had like two or three seats that he made us like go lean. I lean left. So, I mean, okay. I, I went to the left side. But but yeah, I participated a couple of times. I said a couple of okay. things. I actually said that it, it's I made a point And the more I look, look into Frank Luntz, he's a bit shady because he's always trying to reinforce what he believes in and his biases. So his whole thing is that college students don't want to listen to each other. They heed, if, the, if, you, if college students disagree politically with each other, that they will not listen to, to each other. Like there's, they, mm -hmm. there's not enough cohesion and they're not willing to listen to the other side. And I made a point that college students are the only populace in the United States who actually have to live together and spend time because most Americans, they go to work, right? If they disagree with their coworkers, they can just go back to their homes and their families. But college students, they live in dorms, they live in apartments, they have to interact with, people constantly that they disagree with so it's just more likely that there'll be more tension right because they have to spend so much time with each other and i said my, my point was there's there's polarization all across america regardless of your age it just tends to be more in college campuses because obviously there's um more of a disparity there's more progressives and less conservatives in the faculty and whatnot but uh nonetheless like it was it was just kind of like this um like the Republicans and Democrats would go back and forth and argue about some topics and they would like 
do some training exercises to make them less like polars polarized or whatever so <laughs> it was just interesting to see and you know how dr phil like they interview those people who are the most dramatic during the episode on the side they did that so like they um they're interviewing people on the side who are very vocal and like being very dramatic and stuff and then in the end of the they never told us that it was going to be live like anything at the end they were like okay so this is going to be on dr phil's show sign this uh, form this waiver if you want to be on or whatever and not and so yeah it's uh so that's what happened okay the, so let's go on to the house now the house okay yeah so frank Luntz, he's a millionaire this house uh, somebody looked it up on zillow and it was an 11 million dollar mansion in brentwood brentwood is a very expensive place i'm sure man you know uh yeah uh, it's it, it's a very expensive place high and, class yeah very high class and i go in the house and i've never seen this house before he has these historical artifacts just laying on the table i mean obviously they're like you know um properly staged and you they're not disorganized but for example the treaty of versailles that ended the first world war is just laying there at one of the tables the first ever budget passed by the united states congress is just laying there uh there's uh so during the i believe the continental congress when they were trying to in the 1780s uh, as it was developing they were taking notes they were taking like live notes on it and that little booklet was there the first ever impeachment ticket for andrew johnson back in 1865 i believe was there just laying there um <laughs> it was a bunch yeah he has like the first ever israeli proclamation of a state one of six steven spielberg has one the pr- israeli prime minister has one and he has one um, how did this he, guy get this stuff though well because he first of all he's a history buff so he actually buys a lot of this stuff and a lot of the stuff gets donated to him by like so for example one of the things that was there was some precious american document and he did some work for the British and the British just gave it to him because obviously it didn't hold that much importance to them because they're Britain. And so they just gave it to him as a sign of his like work and stuff. He like, um, I think what he probably does is instead of taking a lot of money because he's a history buff, he just like buys, uh, he just buys like these his important historical. And, and, and the, the craziest thing about this house is that it has an oval office in there in the very basement. <laughs> Dude, he has, so what he has is, and I will tell you guys something like super crazy. So he also has the dress of Monica Lewinsky, a replica dress of Monica Lewinsky that she was wearing supposedly. Monica with, Lewinsky? Yeah, Monica Lewinsky with the whole. So the reason why he has the whole dress is apparently he was really involved in the 1998 Clinton impeachment hearings. And like, I guess he's self-obsessed. So like, I don't know. So he has a replica of the Monica Lewinsky dress for his whole. That's weird. With Bill Clinton. Yeah. <laughs> Very odd. In the oval, it's very odd. And uh, so what he has, he has a Lincoln bedroom. So where the president sleeps in the White House is called the Lincoln bedroom. And he has a Lincoln bedroom and the, the Oval Office combined together. And so like, right, when you open the Oval Office, the presidential like uh, song plays, you know, like the dun dun, whatever. And then the, the, the Resolute Desk is there. Uh, he said like the, the, the positioning of the couches is according to like how the Oval Office actually is. Every single thing that's there is from past administrations, like in terms of the, the, the staging of the house. Um, is it like one to one ratio? He wants What's to be a president. Is it like huh? one? Is it like one to one ratio? Like everything's I, like sizing wise identical. Like it's not completely identical, but but okay. it's very close. Like even the background, you know, like how there's like a trees behind the Oval Office. Yeah, yeah. So like he has like a wallpaper that's kind of like in the like background. A drop down. Yeah, like a, like a drop down. <laughs> yeah, dude, he had a shooting range at his house. He had a bowling alley. I mean, bowling alley is very typical for mansions, like a basketball court, or whatever. But a shooting range with his own face on it. So he used to be like very unpopular amongst the Democrats. And he has like a poster of himself on MSNBC. And he's the target for the shooting range. He has like an autograph of every single president since George Washington signed. Uh, he has like pictures with Henry Kissinger, a very evil guy. He has pictures with uh, Tom Brady, Bill. I mean, he's I mean, I don't know. He's he's connected. He's, he's met a lot of famous people, I guess. And um, yeah, so the Oval Office was the craziest thing, I guess, in the house. I think the Treaty of Versailles. The Treaty of Versailles, too. That's crazy. I feel like that should be a museum. the only version. I think there was different. Um, oh, really? Okay. Different. So he doesn't have the only one and only in the world. I That'd be that'd be very like, who who is he to have that? He, that that's, yeah. Yeah. So there's like, I think there was multiple, 
versions of the treaty because it got edited multiple times and so he oh, has one okay. of the versions but still it's is pretty... this one of the originals though yeah it's one of the originals that's what he said and i don't understand like so when you go in museums bro these things are framed you can't really yeah. touch them he let us touch it and one of the girls the students she accidentally like flipped the page for this document he was like he was like, like be, be very careful with this you don't know what you're <laughs> and uh yeah it was the most craziest thing I've seen. He had the nerdiest shoe collection. There was like faces of historical figures on Jordans and like Nikes that I've never seen. He had an American flag with every single American that's been on the moon signed the American flag. And like, <laughs> who hey, man, it's that? cool. It's cool. It's just like, it's, it's odd, you know, cool. very cool, patriotic. So what he, he said, I mean, I guess it's a good thing that he does. He said he uses his house for philanthropy. So a lot of foundations come at his fa- house and fundraise. He said he recently did a $4 million uh, charity event for like a, a nonprofit organization. And they come to the house because it has all these things and like donors come and they're fascinated by the house. And like, you know, he asked people to donate money for these good causes and stuff. But um, the, I looked into him after I, I, I've met him before in one of my classes. He came as a guest speaker and I've interviewed him for something. But he the more I look into him, the more shady he is, man, because he uses communication tools for deception. Like this whole, you know, changing of the word global warming to climate change. Well, it is global warming. It's not, it is, the climate is changing, but it sounds less scary, right? When you say climate change compared to global warming. And like for the Iraq war, like he would say, I read it, my roommate and I, I told him about him and we looked at his template that he released, the whole dictionary of words. And in it, he says that American politicians should, should say that the world is a better place without Saddam Hussein. And like, Repeat that line, repeat that line, and always talk about 9-11 when you're talking about the war and terror so that people are always, always afraid and, and live in fear. And, like, he, this is his whole thing. Like, he's a master uh, of commu- deceptive communication, I guess. But isn't that his, that's the job, though, right? Being political. That's yeah, the but job. you're misleading people. He's so, the, the, what pisses me off, though, man, is now he's really sad about the country being divided and polarized. He's like, but he's dividing it. Yeah, but he in the not anymore. But in his, historically, he's divided the country. Like he's used these tools to make us more polarized. And he says that he's lost hope for America. That we're going towards a very tough path. And like you know, so I don't know. He's very contradictory. But he does care about the country. It seems. But clearly, like you know, he has a, a fetish for for the presidency. I mean, who yeah. has the Oval Office in, in their is. house in, in the Lincoln bedroom? And he said he has like these high profile guests stay over. He's had Tony Blair the former prime minister of, of the UK, who was the prime minister during the war on terror, sleep over at his house. Um, he was like... <laughs> weird, dude. He went to school with Boris Johnson, the prime minister of the UK currently, and he oh, helped uh, him out with his like student election back in the day for Boris. the Oxford Union. Yeah, it's I like... Think, I think it's a common trend nowadays for media to depict um, just separation between Americans. And I feel like, you know... Like you said, you know, they, they were recording the ones who were more vocal, who were more extremists rather than recording the people who are actually normal. And, well, you know, they, they did give everybody a chance to speak, I think. But you're right, though. The whole premise of the taping was, you know, these Trojan Democrats and Republicans don't get along and uh, their things have gone very heated. And like, yeah, they're going to drama. You know, they have to sell something. So they're selling they're selling this. Yeah, but I, 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 when, go ahead. I, I think it just gives a fake reality to the uh you know us just like it does media like audience you know everybody everybody thinks oh america is so divided when in reality i mean certain parts are really divided but we just have a lot of people that are like you know moderate you know care don't care too mm. much about politics just want to be good human beings and that's not ever depicted in media because that doesn't sell right so i feel like it it, it 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 really divides and it kind of makes america seem like something that it's not mm. That's the whole world, though, bro. The, the most noise gets the most attention, right? And the most vocal, they get the most attention. That's like, <clears throat> I, I think people understand that most people don't care, but the people that actually are like, oh, America is so divided and this and that, it's all bad. They're also like the most uh, cynical and the most like vocal in their own way, too. So um, I think a lot of people just don't care either, right? Mm. And it's like, e- even though like they, they're depicting it this way, I don't think people like genuinely care. If, that mm-hmm. may, if, if that's fair. Um, I had a question. What did Frank say anything about uh, when that like uh, you murderous whore uh, quote came out? 
did he say anything or he was well just you like, could see dr oh. phil's reaction was like and like they were like a little like you know thrown off and the, like the, yeah so like it was it was <laughs> dr. Very, phil. yeah dr phil <laughs> Dr. Phil was, I mean, Bro, like, he's, he, like, he's a good, I, the advice that he gave us was very sound. Like he told us to uh, like see the humanity in other person. He said one of the things that was very interesting was he said that as a society, we don't give each other eye contact anymore. Like we're always on our phones and very like, you true. Know, eye contact, looking someone in the eyes and yeah. like telling the other person, I don't trust you is a big thing. Like it takes guts to say something, you know, it's like, so his whole point was, consider the humanity and other the other person see that we have more things in common than what divides us and he said to gain knowledge like gain an extraordinary amount of knowledge to like i don't know but no, one, he has one, good advice he's a smart guy yeah right yeah he does. i think one one quick thing i want to say though going back to genesis point i feel like the people who have the loudest voices always get the platform, right? So I feel like there's extremists on both sides of the aisle and they're always the ones making all sorts of, you know, newsworthy headlines and accusations and allegations. And it seems because they have the loudest, they have the platforms they get, because what sells news is drama, right? And like division and like, they, they want to feature those types of people. And so all of us think we're more divided. Or I think we are polarized and divided but not to the extent that all of us believe from watching the news, at least. We are polarized, more polarized than, than in a long time, but, but it's not, there's, there's independence. You know, all three of us, for the most part, are really independent politically, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. And we're, we're like the silent minority, I, a majority, the silent majority, where like most Americans are kind of independents, but mm -hmm. like we have to pick sides. Like I had to pick to sit on the left side, you know, in that conversation mm -hmm. like there wasn't really like an independent side so yeah yeah no i mean it's just like the broader conversation you know i remember when we watched that um that borat movie that came out you know mm -hmm. it was it was super funny don't get me wrong but borat i feel too. like yeah borat too but it depicts american and just like oh they're crazy people they're like you know divided they don't care you know they're like because you know that's 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 what's entertaining they depict it like that right and i feel like that's not just borat there's a lot of other like shows and enter forms of entertainment that depict Americans as like, you know, you know, crazy and like, uh, you know, politically enraged when in fact, you know, most, like you said, most of us are just, you know, moderate, independent, or, um, you know, just don't care about this stuff. So. Yeah. I don't know, I, I, have you guys like, so I've had like, ex like multiple experiences, like talking to like, like, okay, for example, right. And this was two days ago. I was at like a local, um, like a burger joint it's called the grill in Anaheim. And, uh, the business owner came out and like one of my friends knew, knew the owner. So he came out to say hi to her. And, uh, I was talking to him and all of a sudden just like ran abruptly, just starts talking about how, how bad California is and how like it's turning to complete shit. But like the, my, my whole premise, like it was just, it just, I feel like there's a lot of older guys like he's probably like mid 40s I want to say I mean getting to 50 and it seems like a lot of people they have like this like they, they they require a voice in this right and they're trying to like teach like young people um about something like th their voice is needs to be more heard because they have more experience on us but like I, I feel like a lot of people in that age range they're they're pretty vocal about um uh, about their opinion what do you what would you say about that like, like people, this, this exact situation has happened like multiple times where it's like a guy mid forties, you know, <laughs> maybe not rich, not like rich, rich, but like, he's probably, he's probably well off. He owns a few restaurants. Right. And they have, they have like Langer. Remember Langer's deli? Like he also, this is one thing that we all experienced when he, uh, what was his Norm, Norman, Norman Langer. Yeah. Norm Langer. Yeah. Norm Langer. Yeah. And he abruptly just started talking about politics and all of that and how bad it's getting. And wait, so you're saying like how we think that mostly young people are vocal, but it's actually the older ones that are more vocal. And it, it was, just, it wasn't really tying in. It was just kind of a point that mm. like, I, I feel I, I, what I've seen like experientially, mm. um, like older people, like not older people, but mid, mid age, I want to say like not boomers, but like Laurent before they are very vocal in like, what they think and how we should be thinking mm. i think yeah. like when the world changes i feel like you know a lot of people just want want it like how it was back in the day and i feel like we might experience this in our lives too where it's like something changes and we kind of don't like it or you know we become you know we have this ideology where oh 
back in our days it was better so i, I mean i feel like that's just a trend <laughs> with a lot of like people back like, in my uh, day <laughs> yeah, exactly back in my day it wasn't like this you know like <laughs> i think i, I mean I, I don't know that that's an interesting question why um a lot of you know that generation feels that way but yeah i have experienced that as well where i talk to people in their 40s and they're really you know pessimistic i guess about but they uh, also feel like their opinion should be heard like I, i've had conversations with people our age maybe in their 20s 30s and they don't have to give their opinions like we can have a conversation just on like the normal stuff of life or like maybe something that doesn't have to do with like the political you know you know whatever i just feel like people like that age and above they have like this urge to give their voice so, so like we like like we take it does that make sense is what i'm saying making sense yeah yeah i know what, I, I know what you're trying to say um but i'm not sure like i i understand why though like i, I know what you mean but I, I'm, okay. not, I'm not sure what the answer it's very is, odd but, you know. yeah even like like i'm we i talked to my dad's friends and they all have like like an abrupt intense opinion about like political standings and it's like i don't i don't get it i don't understand why that age like they take so much pride in like their opinions it just it's very weird you know what's funny at the what's end that? of the taping session um frank was like shame on all of you guys who didn't speak up or something along those lines he was like why didn't you guys speak why why didn't you guys raise your hand and dr phil was like maybe they're trying to process everything <laughs> maybe they're just trying to like understand what actually happened <laughs> um so his point, Frank's point was like, if you don't speak up, no one's going to listen. And he's right. Like, you know, a lot of people who think that it's better to just not say anything. It's not. Well, they're not really helping anything. If you're not going to say anything, then it's like it's like your voice is not being heard. So the only way to make yourself heard is to speak up, I guess. And, and like he's right in that. And a lot yeah, of us I think guess. that he, not by not I mean, he, OK, us, he's right. But, you uh, know, in my time where I've, you know, debated people with the right, it's just like certain people just don't want to no matter how many good points you give them or, or oh, how, yeah. how, you know whatever you say they're, they're just not willing to change what they have they believe in and they're never going to change that no matter how much evidence or proof you give them that their point of view is wrong so i feel like sometimes it's just better not to speak and a lot of these people that go ahead and can't give, change like, them yeah yeah for go sure ahead. you're right we, you can't change people, people are going to be who they're going to be right but like a lot of these people that are just naturally vocal and like they want to give their they're very like like they put on a lot of pressure it's very intense it's not like like a cordial conversation that me and you can have just like you know this is what i think and this is what you think and it's okay because either way we're not we don't know if we're either either of us are right even but the thing is like a lot of these people that are more vocal and especially they feel like they have um like entitlement to, to pressure their opinion on to like, especially younger people. Right. It's just, it, that, that's the odd part to me. I think, I think what's, um, you know, I think what all three of us possess and like, I mean, a lot of people possess and this is a great quality is that if we're like, let's say we, you know, have a view on a certain political topic, you know, if we're provided evidence or, you know, some rationalization that that view is wrong, I think we are able to, you know, process that. And maybe, maybe, you know, if we agree with those points, we can change our view. But I feel like a majority of people just don't have that ability to change their view. It's like, whatever they believe in, they only look for the evidence that follows or that, you know, supports what they yeah. believe in. Like you know, they, listening. Yeah, they, they can't fathom the idea that, you know, their view has that has points that are against you know or ca counterpoints that you know go toward against their beliefs so i feel like that's a really good skill to have where you can actually empathize with the other side and kind of see both sides before you make a decision rather than you know just having a um idea you believe in and just looking for uh things that support your biases for sure dude i i completely agree like active listening and like actually comprehension is, is extremely important. I know we've been on this for a minute, but just like before we move on, um, you know, I, I just, I lost my thought actually. Okay. <laughs> Damn it. Were you, were you going to do something regarding the, the Frank, I mean, the Frank um, regarding the, the house or, Dr. Yeah, the or, or something else? No, it was regarding what Jen was saying. Um, it's okay. Yeah. You, you just get it back. Um, we can yeah. move on to Jen. If you wanted to talk about the trial, right between johnny depp and, and amber heard it's a it's, it's a civil trial right so it's not criminal it's a civil one 
and mm-hmm. it's do you know how it started like do you want to explain to them how, how it started yeah well i think most people know but i'll just give a quick uh recap pretty much you know uh amber uh heard and johnny depp were in a relationship between 2014 and 2016 and um uh, after their relationship amber heard uh falsely accused johnny depp of uh you know, physical abuse and all these things, emotional abuse. Um, and pretty much all of these things were um, kind of spewed out without any real evidence. So uh, for those years where those accusations were filed, uh, Johnny Depp lost all his movie roles, all his, um, you know, other uh, events he was doing and his reputation took a huge hit. And then right now, Johnny Depp is counter suing, or not counter, he's suing Amber Heard uh, for defamation of character um, and his reputation, because obviously, you know, uh, his reputation took a huge hit. So um, right now, there's a trial going on, and uh, pretty much we're finding out that Amber Heard is a freaking psycho. Uh, a lot of the recordings, a lot of the footage just sh- show that Amber Heard. Uh, you know is not a sane human she needs to go to therapy there's something mentally wrong with her you know like there was a clip about when she punched him and he was like johnny i was not punching you i was just hitting you all right like okay like it doesn't matter you physically abuse someone right and it's just like she she was throwing things at him she took a, a poop or shit on her uh, on her his bed like well, who does that like there's something there's actually something mentally wrong with this person there's so much more stuff and like i'm just you know i'm I'm happy this trial is happening because i i like to think that you know uh in uh you know you got to be proven guilty you know you can't just be you, you you can't just be you know falsely accused and um think uh you know that works i mean that works in twitter you know twitter everybody is just you know accused and then oh, that person is bad and when there's no real evidence. And I'm happy this trial is happening because it's giving light to that situation where, you know, people need to provide evidence before they can just falsely accuse someone and destroy their character. Wait, so, one second, though. So, yeah. Janish, I agree with you, but did you see what you did there? You technically pronounce Amber Heard guilty until she's proven otherwise. Like, I feel like... Um, well, both- no, no, no. Okay, I, I haven't said anything about a- a- Amber Heard's like being guilty. I'm, I mean, mm-hmm. but just from that one clip of her, you could tell a lot about her. I mean, I yeah. feel like you could tell a lot about just from that one clip of him hitting and and I'm just you know I, I'm like I feel like I'm part of the jury right now. I'm <laughs> I'm I, I get all this information right, and I'm I'm uh, uh, making a judgment about her character right now. So maybe, you know, this, all this evidence is wrong or, you know, we'll figure it out at the end of the trial, but judging from right. I mean, it technically this trial is not about if Amber Heard um, abused Johnny Depp. It's about him uh, defamating his character. So Mm. we'll, you know, like, I feel like as a a sane person, you can tell that she did abuse her, but even that doesn't matter right now. The trial is about him defamating his character. Right. It's a civil trial, like you said. His character, right? it, it, uh, or it, about her destroying his character, mm-hmm. you know, his reputation. That's why he's suing her. Yeah, I think yeah. the premise of the the trial uh, it, it stemmed <clears throat> from the the op ed that she wrote in the Washington Post. Right? She yep. the title of the op ed was um, "I spoke up against sexual violence mm-hmm. and faced uh, and, and faced our culture's wrath that has to change." End quote. So that was the title. She wrote this in the end of 2018, and even though she doesn't directly name Johnny Depp, everybody in Hollywood or everybody in the world knew like who she was kind of like mm-hmm. throwing shade at. And Johnny Depp is saying, how much, how many millions of dollars is he suing her for? 50 million, I think. 50 million. And is she counter suing him? She is, right? Yeah, she's counter suing him for 100 million. Oh my God. I think, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So he, Johnny Depp is saying like she doesn't have any, you know, foundation for leveling all these allegations and that, you know, he's not getting any roles because, you know, understandably enough studios and, and, you know, people who make movies don't want to give people roles who are controversial or they don't want to, they don't want to sacrifice the, the, the movie just to get one guy to play a role. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, I agree with you. I, I've seen, I haven't seen the whole trial. I've seen clips here and, here and there. I've seen some like cross-examination and, and it seems like even the way 
maybe I don't know if I, if I have any biases into this, but Amber Heard's like the way she sits and positions herself and like her reactions compared to Johnny Depp's. Johnny Depp just looks more natural and more calm. And Johnny Depp just looks like he he's truthful because he doesn't look stressed out. Like he just he's just himself the whole time. And I feel like Amber Heard is trying to be someone else. I don't know if that's like me being biased or, acting. or anything. Dude, to I was to okay. Man, so but, I was I was yeah. totally thinking about that. Even like he, he does seem like a very natural person right up there, and like the stuff he says, like very flows. And but her, she's just like yeah. the whole time, just very like stand still like very you know robotic but the problem is she's not that great of an actress right he is a phenomenal actor like he will go he's going down in history like her if it wasn't for this trial like her name would get lost after she's like dead unfortunately oh my but God. it's it's I reality seen, right? I, I don't know her i've never seen any of amber heard movies. yeah she's not that great don't watch her stuff okay. but like <laughs> edward scissorhands like pirates of the caribbean th- these are like names that will go down in history Charlie chocolate in history. factory bro he that mm-hmm. was a insane and so act. like my my whole point is maybe he is acting right maybe he he is an actor he like his literal like his job his career is to be somebody he's not and i don't know the guy you don't know the guy so we don't really know how he really is in real life whatever we know he's like a quirky person he has a you know a different personality so maybe he is but i just thought it was an interesting thought yeah i I watched you watched a good uh portion of like a lot of the clips of the trial Mm -hmm. and it's funny because the you know, he had, he actually did have a drug issue in like 2014 uh, through 2016 while he was in a relationship with Amber um, Heard. He, he had a drug issue and how the defense lawyer is trying to portray Johnny Depp is that he's this guy who, you know, just takes drugs all the time. He was, uh, he was, um, he had an illness and he was, you know, hurting emotionally, hurting uh, Amber Heard because there was no evidence, there's no evidence still that a- Amber Heard got hit physically abused by Johnny Depp so they're trying to paint that he you know he was emotionally abusing uh Amber Heard which you know they're not doing I feel like they're not doing a good job because all the clips say otherwise where it feels like Amber is abusing Johnny for you know drinking so much and you know he dude there's a multiple occasions where he calls him he calls her his, uh, like Johnny Depp for a baby because he hit her I mean uh she hit her um, she hit him and um he he just he 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 didn't do anything back he was like stop being a baby like why, why are you just not defending yourself and stuff like that it's like it's like dude like what is wrong with you what is wrong with this person and i'm glad uh johnny depp did not hit uh, amber heard because if he even hit him once it hit her once it, this trial would be over even just one time if johnny depp hit amber heard one time this trial would be over amber heard wins automatically so you know I feel like I, it, that is the double standard, but I mean, I feel like it's fair. I mean, it, you know, it, it is what it is, but like, thank God Johnny Depp didn't like hit her at, at all. So, I mean, it, you know, I looked at past interviews going back to Matt's point. We don't, we don't know Johnny. Right. But like, I looked at his past interviews to understand like his personality or to see if he's the same guy. And honestly, dude, he's always been very soft spoken. Like I saw an interview he did with Oprah Winfrey 10, 15 years ago, saw an interview he did back in the eighties. And like, he was saying how he doesn't really like Hollywood that much. And like, um, he's also had a very like, uh, tumultuous childhood with his mother being like very abusive towards him. And like, he said that he changed houses 40 times as a child, bro, 40 times. And he was not exaggerating. And I feel like he's the same guy, but you're right. He's a really good actor, but so he could be acting, but, but sincerely though, it seems to me that Johnny Depp just made a bad, uh, bad decision like to to be in a relationship with this with Amber Heard, and that things got out of control. And yeah, yeah, it, I just feel bad for the guy. Again, like we don't know what's. Again, I am I am assuming, and I have a bias towards Johnny Depp, but I, I, I think, honestly don't care for this trial. But but like, let's see what happens. <laughs> I think if most, I think we're not crazy to be siding with. Johnny Depp when most of the world is siding with Johnny Depp it feels like like the public opinion is clear like a lot of people are supporting Johnny and it just makes sense after you hear the clips like yeah sure you could say there is not enough context but if you watch like the trial there's plenty of context given before those voice recordings are shown where you know they're asked questions like Johnny what what were you doing at this time where were you and um, it just feels like I mean I'm definitely siding with Johnny Depp and um, 
I think I think it's a it's a good I mean you know it, it's nothing like crazy like it's not something that will change uh, our political spectrum or anything but I think it's a good trial to show that you can't just you know be handing out false accusations without without some uh repercussions repercussions yeah, yeah exactly for sure uh so like going back to Ibram your point like I know you watched a few in, like interviews in the past just like just to like you know I, like diagnose some kind of you check it out see if there's comparables um so you, you know the whole situation with like t- not right now but like Tiger Woods and how he was like the golden boy of like all sports of all celebrities like he was the cleanie he was like the clean mm-hmm. squeaky clean boy mm-hmm. um and in reality he he wasn't squeaky clean right and so I, I think the interesting thing is here is like Tiger Woods was not an actor, right? He was a, he was a celebrity and he was an but athlete. He, he fooled. In he was quotes, an athlete. And he quotes, though. <laughs> what do you mean? The golfer. <laughs> Bro. I'm kidding. In I'm my kidding. opinion, <laughs> skill level wise. So have you watched the, the documentary um on him on HBO? No, I he's the great. He's a goat. No, no, no. I'm not. Yeah, he's a goat that. in he's golf. Go- yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, Controversial. But bro, watch his his HBO uh, documentary if if you will. It's only two episodes. Maybe you won't. But in my opinion, dude, his skill level was higher, is higher than Michael Jordan. On a com- on a, no. it's discomparable okay, because let me basketball. Stop you right there. No, dude. <laughs> let it, me just it's stop actually, you right there, brother. No, no dude. If you no, understood sir. golf, bro, it's actually insane. <laughs> like it, it's 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 Im- unbelievable, remarkable. Like people diagnose him and like they compare him to like a div- divine right it's freaking it's odd it's really odd how he's able to like pull this stuff off dude he played the masters so i don't know if you're aware of what the masters is at all but he played the masters like the in 2010 farms, right yeah it is so it's, it's called augusta in georgia and he played in 2010 he he already won four times in the past five times in the past and um no sorry what am I saying? Way more than that. I don't remember exactly, but way more than that. He's won since like the nineties. Um, but point being, he played on a completely broken leg and he beat everybody by like, so in golf negative is good. Right? So he was like negative 10 be- below everybody else on a broken leg. And he's playing the best in the world. Not only is that he's making like chips. And, and so if you understood like how small the golf hole is compared to like the ball, and like the distance and everything, he's like chipping it in. He's not even putting it regardless i don't know why i'm going yeah, on no, this tangent. I was like, sorry okay. sorry sorry i, I just, believe like, you i believe you tiger was great <laughs> so i watched a documentary <laughs> yesterday or two days ago or something and just got <laughs> into it but anyway um uh point being if tiger was able to fool all these people for like the latter half like if it's 20 years of, or 40 years of life like 20 years of his life he's able to fool all these people i think johnny can definitely do that man was he fooling people or was his private life just not exposed? Like he just kept it was it not private. exposed. Yeah. No, no, no. no. He was fooling life. people, bro. You think there was... was fooling people? No, no, not Johnny Tiger. Oh, Tiger. oh, oh okay. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. And obviously, it wasn't exposed if you're fooling people, right? But yeah. like he had he had select people in his life that were protecting him, and like they yeah. wouldn't allow the media to get out. They would pay out, or they would mm. you know create some sort of leverage, um, and so it wouldn't happen. You're talking about like the affairs he had and stuff like that. Uh, and other miscellaneous but yeah okay yeah i feel like for celebrities they have their whole pr swing right the pr yes. wing of there so they have to like preserve their public image and like they go to a very they go to all lengths possible to protect their public image well johnny depp i i feel though as if like do you know how he started johnny depp i was watching one of his interviews and nick nicholas cage was friends with johnny depp and he told johnny Johnny moved to Los Angeles. He's from uh, Kansas, I think. He's from Kansas. He moved to Los Angeles when he was 18 or 19, and he was a musician. He said he was an unemployed musician, and he was struggling to pay his rent and food, and Nicolas Cage was his friend, one of his friends. I don't know if Nick Cage was back, big back in the – I don't know. He wasn't big. Yeah, yeah. Told Johnny to act, and he got him in touch with his agent, with Nicolas Cage's agent, and he got in, and he auditioned for Platoon and the Oliver Stone movie that was mm. pretty big, and then his career took off. But um, so, yeah, like he he has very humble beginnings and I guess a lot of people have humble beginnings and they can change. But I feel like Johnny Depp, for the most part, has been the same guy in public life. It seems like he's not really acting in the way he's acting, like the way he is in court is the way he is in actual real life. That was my point, like watching his interview. So it doesn't seem like he's acting. But either way, it's an interview, right? So it's not real life. He's still in front yeah, of the camera. But he's not switching his character up. I feel like Amber Heard is trying to put on an image that she's not. But again, I will make this point. I feel like as a society, like sincerely speaking, 
I feel like we're much more harsh on the way we see women and the way like their images and like we're as a society we're just harsher on women and like I feel like men have it easier I, I, I really do think so and I feel like a lot of the stuff with Amber Heard and Johnny Depp honestly um don't want to sound like one of those people but but it is like part of it a lot of the attacks against her have been very like sexist online like it just it just the sad reality and I feel like if you you should stick to the facts in terms of attacking Amber Heard like stuff like you just said pooping on his bed uh, if that's true, that's crazy. Obviously, like a psycho thing to do, uh, stuff like that. But like uh, commenting on the way uh, her her like expressions and stuff. And I now I know I made that comment earlier. It's just like I feel like we're just much more harsher treating. I think, especially in courts. Like, I don't, I don't know, know how much agree. I don't know how much clips you guys have watched, but you guys should definitely watch more because the more you watch, the more you're gonna know Amber Heard is actually a psycho. Like I already made up my conclusion. After no, I agree. I, I'm with Johnny. This Johnny person... seems like the victim here. She's definitely yeah, the no, no, no. That that's already a given. Johnny is the victim. The given. Just... Wait, how how can that be a given? Though? That's my whole thing. <laughs> I'm, whole I'm telling you, just I'm telling you, just watch the clips. <laughs> any sen- any sensible person that can rationalize, just watch like, the, the video, conversation. Dude. Just watch. Just, I mean, the trial is like eight hours plus, but you can, there's like a lot of clips that are you know taken apart. Where it's like ten minute clips, ten minute clips. You know what sold me on Johnny Depp? though was his friend's testimony man like his friend's testimony did you see his friend's testimony yeah yeah yeah, yeah. dude that was the most honest thing i've seen in court. like i have never seen that good of a testimony he was so honest that the lawyers were kind of like caught caught off guard like they yeah. were like trying to challenge him and the more they challenged him the more like his honesty just gave gave away like he was um he, johnny depp's friend uh, not that successful but johnny depp has like helped him all his life and they were just trying to say the the, the amber heard's lawyers were trying to say that he's only speaking out in favor of johnny depp because he financially kind of supports him but clearly that's not the case like you could just see like the love that he has for his friend and mm-hmm. like you could see johnny depp's reaction to his friend's testimony too like you could see like they're really good yep. friends and like you know he's he said he's his friend has been so emotionally distraught by Amber Heard. Like she's like, she's been that much of a negative impact that he's still recovering. This friend of his is still recovering from the tox from the toxic nature of Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. I thought that was really interesting. Um, okay. I have a question real quick before we, before we move on to the next topic. Um, so the lawyers on, on her, on her end, they seem to be like incompetent. Like it they're doesn't actually so me. dumb. They're actually so they're, dumb. They're like incompetent. Like I don't. Here's what say. I don't get Here's is, say. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That that's one thing. For example, another thing is like they asked Johnny Depp four times, like twelve times, if it was his signature, like on some document. He's like, "Yes, that's my signature. What else do you want me to say?" So, like, riddle me that. Why do they do that? And then with the friend, I, I don't remember that guy's name, but they also asked him like five times if he was aware that she was wearing makeup. Like, or what type, no, no, sorry. What type of makeup he would, first of all, most dudes don't even know the difference between <laughs> like the different types of makeups and stuff like that. That's just makeup. like, that's just like common, you know, that's common ground here. So, but I don't understand it. How can you be so incompetent or like, maybe I don't understand it because I'm not a lawyer. Or I've never been through these courses, but what is it? Like, what about them is making them ask the same question in 12 different ways? Because they're not getting the answer that they want. So with, yeah. so with the with the Johnny Depp thing, he was not giving them a straight answer. Like, even though we knew, like, what he was trying to say, he wasn't – what was that signature? So he wasn't saying, yes, that's my signature. He was saying – He did it appears, say that. He didn't say, yes, it is my signature. He didn't say that. I, I watched that clip. He said something along the lines, like, uh-huh. it appears if I signed it, it must be my signature. Something along the lines. He didn't want to – so the part of the, the strategy for the Johnny Depp tri- lawyers okay. is, like, don't just give them everything that they want, like, straight away. Like, you know, make them – I don't know something along oh. those lines. So they have to like. The but, they is, but, but no, but they, 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 they want the, they want to establish a fact, and they want the, the 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 defendant to say it multiple times to establish that he is saying this. And if and, and if it's not true, they can go back to this testimony and be like, "You said this, but evidence shows this." So they want to. But show Johnny's it. making them look dumb here. Like that's how I perceive it. Yeah. Well, Johnny's just a good. Uh, he's very charming, and so the way he dealt with it was very like you know well his buddy as well made them look incompetent well his friend he's not the most charming guy well they were trying to show with his friend is like i haven't seen that specific clip but i'm sure they were just trying to establish that he knows this type of makeup but they were just trying to establish a fact and he wasn't giving them what they wanted to hear and so they keep questioning him in different ways until they give him them some sort of an answer that will later help on with their like 
strategy in the trial. So in that clip, for example, with Johnny's friend, they were I haven't trying seen to make that clip, him... so I don't know what you're referring to, but okay. I'm, well, let me explain it then. So they are asking him. There's a certain type of I don't know what it's called, but they're they the first time they're like, do you, did you know she was wearing makeup? No. Did you know she was wearing this type of makeup? No. And but the way they were phrasing it, they were trying to make him say yes, but he kept saying no, 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 and so that yeah. made them look incompetent. Well, that's the part. Of the... I mean. I haven't seen that clip, so I don't know. But yeah, I mean, lawyers do that where the, the guy's saying something else and they want to prove something else. And so it's really weird, dude. It doesn't make <laughs> yeah. sense to me. It's pretty funny, I actually. Like, like he's like, it, no, I feel no. like it is funny. <laughs> <They're> like, yes. <laughs> it's hard to counter <laughs> the lawyers are having a hard time counter suing or like you know, going against Johnny Depp because there's not a lot to work off of. So that's yeah. that's that you're right, Janice. That's what they, I think. They need to get as much as they can and try to work off what they have. So yeah, that's I agree. Okay, can we move on? Let's move on to the house. Yeah, can I just say I, I don't care okay, about this trial. I, I honestly wish the best to Johnny Depp, but I feel like it's <laughs> there's, there's so much media attention that it's getting. Like I get it, but I we have so many other things that that are more important than than what Johnny Depp or Amber Heard do. They're both gonna be fine yeah. after this trial. They'll both. Do the well. interesting thing is, man, is like it, this proves that celebrities are human too. So many people like idolize these figures, and they're just they're normal. They're just carbon like us, right? They're like. They're humans that just, they got lucky and they have some skill and it's just, I think, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, Ibrahim, I do, I care a little bit about this trial because I feel like, you know, I can, it, it's so messed up that someone can just like, ha has so much power to just like falsely accuse them and like ruin their lives. I feel like, imagine like, <laughs> you've, been like on, you've been on top of Hollywood or like whatever field you're in and someone says something and now everybody just hates you and your reputation is ruined. People were like going to uh, his kids in high school and like telling him like, oh, your father is a, a rapist or abuser or whatever. Like, yeah, it's I like terrible. That's, I feel like that's terrible. So, I mean, I, I in the, in a way like, oh, this trial doesn't impact, you know, there's still a war going on in Ukraine. I agree. But like, I think it is still important to, you know, get it dealt with. <laughs> All right. Uh, good, good you guys want to talk about yeah. uh, wait, wait, Let me. No, what, no, what do you no. want to talk about first? Let's jump. Come on, let's jump into the housing market real quick. Okay, okay, okay. go for it. So, okay, this stuff. I don't know. You guys don't seem so interested in it as, as I am, but um, <laughs> no, I'm so interested. the more I'm interested, okay, okay. I really am. So it's just my whole thing is like the housing market has so much to do with the economy. It's like one of the largest factors in the states, if not the world, right? Um, I wouldn't say the world actually, but anyway, uh, in, in the United States and first world countries for sure. So what happened right now is obviously we, we've been in this hectic market where prices are 200,000, 300,000, sometimes upwards of a million over asking price. Um, and that over million, that's usually like luxury homes and all. But if you're talking about your average five, $600,000 house in California, at least, uh, no, I'd say this, I'd say in general as well. Um, you have like 15, 16 buyers, right? And the reasons because the interest rates for one are extremely low. Another one is, you know, the income the last two years has been the highest in the United States than it's ever been per capita. Um, and so like just these things are adding up to, you know, higher prices. Um, and so what, what the government tries to do is when like 2008, for example, when it completely blew up, um, all the mortgage rates were extremely low. And when it completely blew up, the way the government fixed it is raising interest rates right and so right now so two months ago we were below two percent it was the lowest in history the mortgage rates were 1.9 percent and now they jumped up to five and a half percent and if you're talking like in terms of a home that you're buying say five hundred thousand dollars say you put like 20 percent down um so 100 grand your payments are increasing by like 600 to a thousand dollars a month just by a four percent increase so the way it works, so let, just like a little understanding of it. The, so when you get a mortgage and especially when you get like a fixed rate mortgage, the way it works is you're, what the banks do is they position all of the interest in the beginning front load of your payments. So you're paying 60% of the interest down your first 15 years. The latter 15 years, it reverses. You're putting more money into your home rather than interest. And so it, it, it's really messed up the way the banks do it, but they can because they control money and money controls everything. Um, but I mean, so they get paid first, right? The banks get paid before everything, uh, which is really messed up, but it is what it is. And so right now what's happening is there's a 5%, 5.5% hike. <clears throat> and although it seems like, you know, price are going to be higher. So, you know, uh, demand will start decreasing. 
that's not necessarily what's happening. We also have the highest rate of investor uh, in, uh, um, influx in the States, right? And so, sorry, foreign investor influx in the States. And so that's happening. Um, and, and there's just a lot, the rich are just getting richer because now everybody, like we're in the age of information, right? So everybody that has money knows real estate is the safest option. And so what do you do when it's the safest option? You pay more for it, right? That's what security is. And so like, in terms of California, the interesting portion about it is we are the most desirable state. Like we have the best weather. It's in, undisputable. Like a lot of people are moving to Miami and saying it's comparable. But if you go to Miami and if you go to Florida, it's not the same as like Los Angeles. It's just not like the climate is different. Like it's genuinely more dry. It's hotter. It's not as bearable. Um, you know, sure the food's great or whatever, but they don't have the desert. Like we have the desert. They're in more like a tropical climate. Okay. We have the mountains. Like we, California is just ideal. Right. Um, and if it wasn't for high prices and it wasn't for political, di uh, you know, uh, split there, I think everybody would agree with that, but it's, it's just the people that are changing. Uh, but my whole point is, I don't think like, for example, so I'm, I'm working with this guy and he just sold a house. He's an agent. He just sold a house for $850,000 in crappy part of Anaheim. Like it's industrial and it doesn't make any sense how it sold for this much. It was over $120,000 over asking price. Right. And for like a crappy house, like literally if it was me doing the house, if it was my house, I would redo everything just because how bad it is. But these people can't afford that. So unfortunately, like it doesn't happen. But the whole point is, Prices are going to stay higher. And what's going to happen is cities are now like supporting that because they higher prices mean higher taxes and they get more money. And so what that means is richer people are going to come in and poorer people are going to move out. And so this entire and what this is called is right regentrifying. And so this gentrification that's that's occurring, it's going to continue to occur. And it's going to continue even through um, economic pullback. And California is eventually become, going to become this place where it's just the rich living here. And it, it just, it's, it sucks um, because it just takes away a lot of culture that that's happened in a lot of these communities, but um, that's what's happening. Uh, what, what do you guys think? The most interesting thing about the housing market, in my opinion, is yeah. um, how mortgage rates are rising again. And uh, I think they're at 5% now, right? They were, they Five were. Enough five, five and a half now. Okay. Wow. So yes, yeah, so I feel like that will definitely cool down the housing market because it, it's been, you know, if there's a house out there that usually there's been like 20 offers now there there might be like, you know, seven or eight. So that's, I mean, we'll it's see brutal still. Yeah. But I think prices are not going to go down. They'll still go up, but, but they yeah. won't be like going up as high as, as they have been. I think they were going up like 17% every year in California. Is that 17, sound right? Yeah. Yeah. So right. I, um, I, I, I mean, I mean, I, it's interesting to see, uh, see this unfold, especially with inflation, right? Because um, like you, so when did this house, the example that you gave us, when did this happen with the Anaheim house? That was this the like house? last month, last month, this month last, or last month. So it's right before the tax increase. Yeah. Yeah. So not tax increase, sorry. Interest increase. It, okay. Interest. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't, I, I feel like, in the next three, four years, you know, maybe it will, it will make sense to buy houses because they'll be cheaper. I don't know. I feel like it'll, it'll take at least two to three years more for houses to like get back to normality because right I, now I they're overpriced. So I don't yeah. think they're ever going to go down. No, especially in California. No, even with like a recession, a possible recession. You well, yeah, think? unless if there's like a recession, but like, that's like, you're just, no, dude, I don't even, think it's going to go down. So like, I, I get what, like, okay, so two things. Higher interest rate will cause prices to slightly go down. Slightly. The thing is, yeah. So, yeah, sure, in a few years, it, it'll make more sense because it'll be maybe $100,000 less. But even if there's a recession, this was my point when I was speaking earlier, like, even if there's a recession in California, like what Jen was saying, it, it, it's sure, it seems like it can go down, but they won't because of how gentr just because of how California is going. Maybe in the rest of the country, not Miami, I'll tell you that anymore. But like, if you go down to like Boise, Idaho, or like somewhere in North Carolina, uh, it's like they're decently desirable areas right as of right now in the next five years. And during recession, the houses will for sure come down in those areas. 
but people are getting rich in those areas and then moving to California because it's more desirable. And so people that have money are willing to spend more money for convenience, for desirability, for status. And so it's, 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 we're, we're like in a, in a pot in California and everything is just going to increase because of that reason. Yeah, I, I feel like California is like a special case where it's, um, you know, great weather. There's a lot of, you know, uh, benefits to living in California. Obviously the tax and everything is high, but you know, California, if it, I, I read somewhere, if it was a sovereign nation, it would be the fifth highest GDP in the world. 100%, so, yeah. you know, it, I feel like it, California is like a special case where I, I I don't think prices are going to go down because just there's so much demand to you know live here or buy property here even just investment here right so i mean yeah like matt was saying in other states it is a possibility but plus i feel like you can't really like i mean maybe you guys have more statistical analysis or something but i mean it's just hard to predict a recession i mean like we we don't know when that's going to happen like people thought it's going to happen in covid and well it did it's like it was a slight recession but then it jumped back up right it's like you can't predict like a 2008 again. It's just like it's it's hard to predict that, I feel like. Fair. It, it's it's hard to predict. But like my point is not when the recession is going to happen. But my point is when the Even recession does. does happen. Yeah. yeah. Like what's going to happen like it, as a result of it. Right. And, and so like as a result of what's the commonality between all the recessions, the rich get richer. That's when the rich become they, they 10x their money. And mm-hmm. so where do you want to 10x your money? Do you want to 10x it? in somewhere in montana or do you want to 10x it in the most desirable area right so you're saying when there is a recession it doesn't really matter because the rich will just be able to buy up more houses and like you know That's be able to happen. do more than like yeah. okay yeah that makes sense and, and interest rates housing it, it's a national thing right it's not it's not province-wise and so even when, when the interest rates go down in montana they're going to go down in california and so why would somebody want to go buy property in nebraska or montana or somewhere when you can have it here and people will just pay more for it and eventually will increase because this stuff is circulating. Look, I think like one of the solutions is to, it sucks because I, I don't even feel comfortable saying this because it's like it's we're a capitalist country and I'm a capitalist myself, but like minimizing foreign investment, man, it, it sucks. But like, I think it has to happen in order to, you know, at least cool down more like foreign investors are coming in and just, stockpiling they're just throwing all their liquid assets in california in new york in florida right now and it's just it's insane because it's screwing all all of the people that are like middle class up like they're forced to move to arizona like i've talked to multiple people and they've moved to arizona just because it's it's relatively close and you know there's some job like you know over there jobs over there it's just a really weird situation hmm no, that it's, is interesting. Yeah. yeah, I don't, I don't see how they can block foreign investors though. I mean, it's, it's technically, what are they gonna say? Like, don't invest yeah. your money in our country. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's not possible. I think that's like something that would definitely like minimize uh, high prices, but like, it's not real. It's not realistic. Um, do you want to talk about streaming now or? Yeah, that's cool. So something really fascinated. Um, so what happened was. Netflix, everybody knows Netflix, their stock is down 44% in the past month. And uh, they just released their, their, their Q1, the, the first quarter's earnings report. And in the, in the earnings report, um, Netflix, for the first time ever, uh, lost 200,000 subscribers. Uh, just for comparison, last quarter, Q4, they gained 8.3 million subscribers. 8.3 million they gained. And then this quarter, they lost 200,000 subscribers. What happened? Number one, they suspended their services in Russia. And so they lost 700,000 subscribers because of the war in Ukraine. They took a stand and they're like, we're not going to provide Netflix to Russians. And so they lost 700,000 subscribers because of that. And then um, also, do you guys know how many m- million households around the world don't pay for Netflix? Like they just use the account yeah. sharing a hundred million households across the world. Yes. A hundred million oh, and 30 million of them are in the U S Canada region. And so Netflix is saying, number one, they're going to crack down on this uh, account sharing thing. That's been happening that a lot of people share their account passwords. Right. I think some of us do it <laughs> as well. Yeah. And because we do, we do it. Cause like we can, right. I mean, and, and again, 
one thing the the coolest thing about not the coolest thing the most like weird thing about it is that netflix actually promoted sharing passwords there's a tweet i want to read to you guys uh the netflix official twitter account on march 10th 2017 they tweeted quote love is sharing a password and so they were they as a company policy really promoted password sharing because their whole strategy was we want more eyeballs on our content it doesn't matter if some of these guys don't pay the more eyeballs we catch uh the more people would want to you know eventually subscribe to us and, and you know watch our content more consistently and, and you know that strategy worked until this point because uh there's a lot more streamers out there there's paramount plus right there's disney plus there's yeah. hulu there's hbo max and netflix always said that they were way ahead of the game but now they're finally saying one of the things in their earnings report they highlighted was that they're facing an increased amount of competition from these fellow streamers. And number two was uh, the account sharing is through the roof. It's 100 million households. Uh, and number three, the, they're considering putting ads on some of their content. And their theory is that, look, if there are consumers out there who are willing to pay less to to and the trade off for that is that they'll just be able they'll just see ads for paying less they're saying if 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 the consumers can just be given this choice and there's if there's consumers out there that that would you know be fine with taking up this choice why not why not do this to make our product more monetizable and um they're trying to do those two things Dude. to to make uh to make to you know monetize Netflix more and so um yeah and, and their projection for next quarter is not looking good either uh, there's a famous investor, Bill Ackman. I don't know if you guys know him. I hate the guy, but he in January uh, placed a four hundred million dollar bet on Netflix, and he like proudly announced that he, he's investing on Netflix. Oh no! <laughs> Two months later, he's just got liquidated all of his uh, position in Netflix and lost four hundred million dollars. I think. I know. I think it was over a billion that he invested, and he lost. He lost hundreds of millions of dollars, and he said he only invested in companies where they can. Um, where they can like legitimately predict what's going to happen in the future for the company. And they can't do that for Netflix at this given time, given the Q1 earnings report. And so uh, I thought that was really interesting. And also CNN plus the, the, the streaming uh, swing of CNN shut down completely. They spent $300 million. They, I think they spent half a billion dollars advertising for CNN plus all around the United States. What is and CNN plus? I've CNN plus. That. I was in New York, bro. So I was seeing like ads of CNN plus all over uh, at the subway, uh, Times Square. It was all over. And um, so only 10,000 or 20,000 people signed up and it was a colossal disaster. They shut the whole service down. They fired everyone who was a part of CNN plus and it's no more. Um, and I don't know if you guys know, but they, they, there was a recent big merger between Warner Media and Discovery. And so, um, you know, it's interesting to see. Um, how that'll unfold later on. I find it hysterical that some guy who's smoking DMT and eating elk meat is averaging more viewers than companies that are spending like $300 million on streaming uh, services and stuff like that. Insane. Um, but in terms of Netflix, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's just, I feel like uh, the sharing is a big deal. I don't know how they're going to crack down on that. I feel like a lot of customers are not going to like that. Like, they're going to have to pay for their own account. Um but also the competition is pretty fierce um, in terms of like, it feels like, you know, I, I've been watching a lot of Disney plus shows, you know, I've been watching HBO shows. So I haven't really been on Netflix that much, to be honest. Uh, there's like other shows that I'm, I'm watching just personally. And I feel like that's the same for a lot of people, right? Where it's just like, there's, there's more options for people. So my, people are going to exercise that. Well, my thing is like, <clears throat> First off, like you pay more for more screens, right? And so like account sharing, it's not really account sharing. You're just adding another screen to it. And Netflix is aware. It's like, it, it's documented how many screens you have on there. And so it, that's, that's very weird. First off, another thing is like, it's really annoying. Like the reason we don't have, we're not like cables dead, right? Is because of ads, right? If there's commercials, people don't like commercials. People want like the instant gratification of just watching it now. And like that was Netflix's appeal. Like they started this, and um, well, maybe they didn't start it, but they definitely like grew and they capitalized on that idea. And they're like folding under under pressure. That's what's extremely annoying. Like 
it seems like all these companies, they fold under pressure when the dollar comes about. When like when the dollar comes about, it's it's like, oh, what do we got to do? Like, uh, let, let's take away like our like core value. Like that was one of their core values, right? To give us like something that we pay for and we don't receive the ads. And like, so wait, correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's like, they, they want to add a different subscription. So like, if you pay 15 bucks, you're still going to get the like account with no ad. But if you pay like five bucks, you'll so, get account with ads, but have like, a, it, you know, a different experience, okay. I guess. In, so in I my think opinion- that's, that's, Go ahead, like, that. Finish your that's point. correct that's correct right ibrahim i just wanted to so look initially i had matt's reaction but when i actually read the point of view of one of the co-ceos of netflix they have two co-ceos he was making the point where let the consumer decide for himself or herself so i think so you're right jenish so what's going to happen is they're going to give a cheaper plan it'll be like i don't know how let's say four or five dollars and then there'll be ads throughout and again, this is this is not a solidified thing. They're considering doing this. They're still like, you know, uh, debating over it internally. So we don't know if it's actually going to happen, but they're very much considering. And I think eventually they'll have to do it because every other streaming service does this, right? I, I'm not sure if there's any other streaming service that doesn't have ads. Disney Plus no. doesn't have ads. Disney yeah. Plus doesn't have ads, really? No. HBO Max doesn't have HBO ads. HBO Max doesn't have ads. Oh, oh, Hulu has ads. Sorry, I'm, I'm con- okay. Yeah, just Hulu. Yeah. Just Amazon Hulu. Prime doesn't have ads. I think all of them. If, Amazon Prime does have ads. Yeah, I'm pretty no. sure. it, does. it says yeah, it like does. sponsored, it but it's not it's like sponsored. in the show. Like, yeah, so they have some sort of advertisement. I so, think eventually so, all of them will. I think so, they just advertise their own movies, which yeah, isn't so, really an ad. So Matt, like, uh, ahead, so yeah. certain times it's like um, things that like show up. It's not necessarily an ad like, oh, you're gonna be watching the movie and there's gonna be an ad in the middle. It's more like. Uh, in the beginning you're on the home screen you're on the home screen and there's like mm-hmm. an ad like oh sponsored uh tv show well check this out that's an ad for example and amazon you know, Prime, but it's their yeah. own tv show no it could, well in i guess Usually in Netflix it case it could be anything right yeah it could, yeah it could be their own show so or, it, it's I, just like they're just sponsoring their own stuff just so you see that instead of another product no but i think where netflix is heading is like companies that you know maybe make a new show are going to pay netflix and to show their show to people so they'll watch that you know and I don't think yeah, cable I mean, okay. cable cable is dying because of the ads part. I think it's because of the internet mainly because like we want to be able to see stuff portably like on on our phones, on our laptops and stuff and, and like no, I think um I don't think that's why. I think, I think well, that's one of the reasons that's no, the primary I think, reason. I, I, I think, think the pri- um, to me I think the primary reason is we don't want to wait for a certain t- t- time to watch a show like we could yeah that as well exactly on demand you can watch stuff on streaming on demand yeah i think that's the main reason in my one of the reasons yeah Yeah. Yeah, i agree i I don't know maybe it's just there's multiple there obviously is multiple reasons right i i don't like ads like extreme like bothers the crap out you won't have to watch any ads on netflix because you'll just pay a little bit more not yeah but now i don't even want to like pay for it like i don't even want them anymore you don't want you don't want to watch netflix anymore I'm just it's it's it's, it's, an, it's really annoying, dude. I don't know. <laughs> this whole concept is like really annoying, dude. I, I, it makes I read this, sense, dude, because you want to give yeah, the consumer, economical the consumer sense and business decide sense. for themselves instead of the company deciding to not have any ads. In my opinion, let the consumer decide which plan they want to pick. If they're willing, if they want to pay, if they don't want to pay that much for Netflix, just pick the ads version. If, if they're fine, I feel like a lot of people Bro, are fine. Netflix with is already some increasing ads. prices. Every company, everybody's increasing prices, dude. Who's Bro. not? Everybody's okay. increasing. You got to read this article, inflation. man. I, I read this long article on Arizona Iced Tea. And, um, I, I, dude, okay, you know Arizona Iced Tea, obviously, yeah, right? It's a, it's a so they drink, own right. Brisk. They own a few other companies. Um, but specifically Arizona Iced Tea, they have never increased. They have <laughs> never increased. So since the 70s, bro, they've continued to stupid cater. policy. Then. <laughs> it is not stupid at all. Why not? It's not stupid at all. Bro, that's business ethics, man. Every company in the States has no business ethics. Like they continue to devalue their core values and demoralize themselves. And this company, like this guy, he's out of New York um, and he created this thing called Arizona Ice Tea, right? In, in like in the seventies. And he, his whole thing is I'm going to take the profit loss just so people don't like everybody's like, everything's getting marked up. Eggs are getting marked up. Gas is getting marked up. TV prices are getting marked up. Why should I cont- Why should I go ahead and make their lives more difficult? Like in his head, he's like, I'd rather take a slight profit loss for everybody else's convenience. And sometimes it's like, it's a necessary thing. Like it may not seem a lot. It's only a dollar and sure, maybe increase it to $2. It's not going to affect us, but it's like the thought behind it. It's like, that's like a generous person. Like that's somebody that 
it like should continue to be successful. I'd rather support that guy than go and support like Coca-Cola that continues to increase their prices. And I'm trying to relay this because one's a product, one's a service, right? And so maybe it's a little different, but the whole thought process is still there. I think that's an anomaly, to be honest. It is an anomaly, but I just don't, I don't agree with, with how everything is. I I don't feel like it's always been this way. I think like things are, are extremely money, like greedy wise, like everybody's just greedy. And it's, you know what I bet you though, this company that you said, Arizona Mm iced tea, dude, a company has to pay the salaries of their workers, right? They have to, they have so many more expenses. So it's just the workers that take the burn on the cost. Then if the company, it just makes sense with inflation, right? Our salaries go up with inflation. Technically Mm -hmm. a corporate salary usually goes up keeping up with inflation. Companies can increase prices as long as they keep up with inflation. In my opinion, if you're not even keeping up with inflation, if you're doing it beyond inflation, just doing, you know, making some like pharmaceutical companies, like overcharging customers for basic medicine, that's unethical. But if you're merely just trying to keep up with inflation so that you can, you know, account for all your expenses. I think that's just makes sense. No, How does that not man. make any sense though? I think it my makes sense just does, because it'll just okay, be the workers listen, less money. Listen, the listen, the listen, workers listen. will be the one who get, who get screwed this, over. This is my, oh, point that's of view. not true either. This is, this is my point of view. I, I think it makes sense because Netflix core value is to give a good experience to the users, you know, like able to watch a movie. It's not about having a cheap price or, or, you know, uh, them. Oh, we're going to, they never said, Oh, we're going to stick with $7. Like Arizona ice is like, Oh, we're only going to make a dollar oh, or whatever. Yeah. Right. So as long as they keep providing me that good value, uh, good value, like they have good shows, I can watch them and, you know, nothing's laggy or anything. I'm fine with it. That, that's just my opinion. OK, if they increase there, man, like, okay. like whatever, thing. everybody has their own opinion and whatever. Right? <clears throat> my whole thing is like, OK, sure. Maybe it's not their mission statement to not have any ads. Right. Like maybe it's not their mission statement or their vision statement. But like, I think one of the primary reasons it got so big is because it was one of the first services without any commercials, without any advertisements, right? And so like, that's my whole thing. And this whole Arizona thing, by the way, he, he, so sure, it seems like the workers would take the burn on it, but he genuinely, their net profit decreases every single year because of this. Like he's a fat and happy cat, right? His whole thing is I'm fat and happy. Why should I go ahead and become more fat and happy? I should lessen the burden on the people on my on my customers like they're the reason i'm fat fat and happy right now and so i'm gonna go ahead and take you know a little bit of a hit it's not gonna really affect me and like can i ask you a question this is my dilemma bro has this guy's salary remained the same every year or does he that i haven't done research on no no bro if his net profit's losing he's losing so he's losing money like he, he so he you're saying this guy is taking a stand. He's like, you know what? I don't want to increase the prices because I'm not that greedy. That's his whole thing. Like, I don't want to charge people yeah, more. I can send you the article if you'd like to read it. I, I'm really interested because I feel like the workers are the ones who are getting screwed over. If they're not like since the 70s, you said they haven't changed yeah. the prices since the 70s. No, it's always so like $1. So the charge? workers are getting paid the same? $1 per can. So the workers oh, are getting the paid of 70s? N- no, no, no. The- price of the product has been the same so i guess it was really expensive when it first launched in the 70s it was a one dollar i guess so i mean well most products are because you don't have that like globalization that we have now especially back then and so most products were more expensive in the beginning like you had to you know give a premium price for a product because you didn't have the like availability but regardless i don't want to get into that that whole (laughs) (laughs) the whole business like the operational aspect of it but uh, my whole thing is like yeah, sure. Inflation increases, but who's also the cause of inflation? Like they're part of the cause of inflation. It's not, it's not just like, the government. They like part they're of part of it. Though. How so? Because if they increase, right, their product, people now have to pay more. If people have to pay more, they have to get paid more. And so this is, it's like a never ending cycle that that's like literally how it well, that's works. just the way our economy works. I mean, everybody has to. I mean, the inflation like is increasing because of monetary decisions. It's taken always by been the like Fed. that. There's always been inflation. What do you mean it wasn't like that? Bro, to this extent? Are you well, kidding yeah, me right it, now? It's getting. Oh, low, no way. That is not true. Inflation that we're seeing today, um, it, it's we haven't seen it since the 80s, but we've seen worse inflation during the Jimmy Carter days. We've seen inflation worse than this. Yeah, so, the, okay. Matt, I guess percent Matt's wise, becoming, man. Matt's becoming a boomer. He's like, oh, what are you back saying? In, back in the dude. back in the day, it wasn't as bad. No, Nowadays, bro, are so you bad. kidding me, man? <laughs> dude, look. Oh my if you're god, trying to dude. Say, look, you look, guys are I tripping. Think, let me, one second, let me one second. So you're uh-huh. trying to say, man, 
You're trying to yeah. say that there's a lot of corporate greed out there these days. Companies are trying to, they're sacrificing their core ethical beliefs if they can make more money, more revenue, right? That's what you're saying? And yeah, I can, fact. I can agree with that. Of course, of course, there's, there's corporate greed out there, right? I mean, there's crony capitalism. Our country yeah, yeah. works on crony capitalism. I agree. I agree. But Netflix increasing their prices to keep up with inflation, I don't think is an example. Like if they want to be, if they want to make, they're a public company. Like if people who are invested in Netflix, the shareholders, they are responsible for them. And so it'd be doing a disservice as a publicly traded company to not make the right business decision. Because at the end of the day, it's all about money for these companies. Like that is the whole business structure, whatever. Arizona Ice Tea is public. Is it? Arizona yeah. Ice Tea? And they, I mean, like a dollar is still like not that, cheap or expensive a dollar is still a dollar like i mean i feel like um it's not it's not like it's 40 cents or 30 cents there are they gonna like you know what i mean like it's not price super it, cheap. sorry so maybe we're maybe i'm confusing things here but the price of it's not my point like my point is they're they're sacrificing so you're saying the, the ads thing was a core thing and now they're like get, get look like it. okay like the the physical like dollar more two dollars more like sure that's there but it's like the act of increasing it that's what yeah. I'm having a problem. I don't care about the $2 more. Like that's not going to affect me. My point is like these businesses do it for themselves. Does that make, is, is this, is this under, like it, it, they do it for the, they, they, I, okay. Let's, let, you know, what? I, I, I actually, <laughs> like, no, they do I, it I, because they have no choice. What do you mean? <laughs> they it's, do have a choice. They, they absolutely don't have, have a choice. choice. Bro, are, None of us could do, oh would you God. like your salary to be increased? I would like to be increased. Keeping up with of inflation course. as, as oh, so you're saying, I actually don't understand your point. It's fine. Like I, it's fine. Legit. No, 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 bro. Okay. <laughs> no, I, I don't understand it either because if I had a business, I would increase it too. You can call me a capitalist. You can call me whatever. I, if I own Netflix, if I'm I was a capitalist, CEO, that's fine. Okay, it's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Maybe I'm misconstruing my point and it's not making sense. My whole thing is like this whole inflation thing, bro. It's just, it, it really like it bugs the crap out of me because it, it shouldn't be as fast as it's increasing. And the, I, I do believe that a lot of these companies look, bro, I own a business, man. I own like, I own a business and like, of course I want to get paid more. My net profit, it, the goal is to be higher. Right. But the way I do it is I'm not going to increase the client's cost. Okay. Look, yeah. Let me use, use this example. So I'm completely like I, my whole goal is to make more money every single year. Right. By owning this business and, and it's to increase my business size. But how am I going to do so? Of course, I want to charge clients more money than I'm charging right now. But my other thing is, why wouldn't I go ahead and, and delete material costs, right? So that's what I do. I go ahead and I look for how, where can I buy products for a lower cost so I can go ahead and do that for the client. So that's what I do to increase my net profit. It's not decreasing my men's labor. Like recently, like I've had to have my guys work longer hours just because we're like down on time and like it sucks, but that's just the way it has to work. So sometimes shit happens, right? But my whole thing is that's not my goal. My goal is to delete uh, material costs, see where like labor needs to be allocated. And that's how I make more money. It's not by saying, hey, like I, I believe my service is worth 20,000 instead of 15,000. So I'm going to charge you that. And like, and try to burn you in the end. Like, I'm not trying to do that. That's a completely different point in my opinion. Because what you're saying Why? is you're not just increasing your, 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 the cost of your labor just mm -hmm. to make more money. Netflix is not trying to make more money. They're just simply trying not to lose money adjusted for inflation. They're absolutely costs. trying to make more money. No, no, no. The, the, it, yes, the, bro. The, the, the stuff that these companies are doing to raise some prices are, is, Maybe they're trying to make a little, I, I don't know, but it seems to me that a company, if they're increasing prices, they have to keep up with inflation. And so it just makes sense that they are increasing prices. I, 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 I disagree, bro. There, they'll there's lose a money if, all they, these companies if they're still going charging. Debt. If gas is like, let's say $7 a gallon, right? And Netflix is charging like $2 for subscriptions. They don't, yeah. like, like five bucks, whatever. Yeah, yeah. As a hypothetical, they're losing money. They refuse to change their prices. If gas becomes $15 20 years down the line and Netflix is still $2 and they're saying, oh, we are taking a stand. We're not increasing prices. They're losing money. So they're doing a disservice to their workers. To their The whole thing is all... Bro, if all these companies had a consensus, like, 
we're not going to do this. That means labor wouldn't increase. But how would they have a Prices consensus? Wouldn't it's, increase. It's, it's, it's capitalism, so they have. To I compete. understand. It just pisses so, me off. I get it. So, yeah, Maybe it's not realistic, not brother. That's not, like if they all have consensus, the prices are dictated by the government. <laughs> government owns. Like, what are you saying? Here? That was my whole thing. Like they can't. It's it's business. I know, man. It just pisses me off, bro. I'm I'm, a, I'm not being realistic. Yeah, I, I admit it. I Maybe know, I'm not. That's why I was just... having trouble understanding. Okay, fine. I think okay. Let my last thing I want to say on the streaming <laughs> thing. I think Netflix has to make an important decision because they're spending uh, i think they spent 13 billion dollars last year on original content and there's sort of an argument that maybe just licensing licensing past content is maybe better than original content because in some areas of the world um you know stuff that's already been made and when it gets put on netflix it, it makes a top 10 list but but I feel like original content is the answer. The more original, like I think that's the reason why Netflix has gotten big. But they're just still thinking if whether or not they should still be spending as much money on original content. And again, should they be making movies like The Red Notice, you know, with The Rock and Ryan Reynolds paying them millions of dollars? I think they took home like 30, 40 million dollars per actor. Like, should they be making movies or should they be make should they be making big budget movies with big stars? Or should they be making more indie movies or like, you know, they can make they can literally make like 10 uh, they can make so many more movies by not paying these big actor salaries right and, and so that's make, thing that, like, i agree with you so i don't know if that's game the right too. way what's that they need to make squid game too squid, they, they i think they are i think that's yeah. already in development yeah i started watching squid games by the way i uh, Wait, like you, didn't, you never watched it i never that's watched it. i watched it in one of my film classes it was television script analysis class oh, and uh, it's it so was so good I like yeah, that. I watched the. I watched. But don't the watch pilot. it in English. It's huh? So bad. Don't watch it in English. I'm watching with subtitles. Yeah, like. Okay, yeah, yeah. watch it in Japanese. Like when they say Japanese, but like subtitles. I thought it was Korean. Or Korean. Sorry, yeah. yeah. What am I saying? Yeah, Korean. Um. Well, yeah, yeah. It's, it's pretty good. Have you seen, Have you seen Squid Games, Matt? Yeah, the whole thing. The whole thing. Did you like it? Yeah. Don't tell me anything that happened. No, I'm not gonna tell you anything. I thought it was a mediocre show. I thought it was it was really interesting and it was an original concept. But I think like everything else was like I don't think it was so crazy like how everybody makes it seem. I That's my opinion. Though. I thought it was like an eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. Okay, so it's okay. If I gave it, I'd I'd probably say like six and a half, seven. So not like terrible. It's not terrible at all. But I I don't think it's like. Like nine out of ten, ten out of ten. That's like Game of Thrones level. So that's how I'm comparing. Game of Thrones it. till season uh, till the last season. The last like season, nine, yeah, exactly. Nine point five, and right. then the last season is after it's like a seven. <laughs> so, bro, you're you're marking Squid Games down one point less than Game of Thrones. I mean, it's completely different categories, but yeah, I think so. Wow, think that's interesting, bro. But like, it's, it's only the first season. Like, I can't because Game of Thrones took a huge hit after the last se- last two seasons. Okay, if you compare first seasons, oh, first Game of Thrones is a ten for the first four seasons. First four seasons, Game of Thrones, is yeah. A 10. But I my think. thing is like you you would mark Squid Games on like almost that scale, like almost there. I mean, I don't know, man. Maybe I'll make it 7.5 or something. Really. <laughs> you guys, like, making me, like... Curious. Well, that's my thing, bro. It's, like, you got to compare it, like, that level. I don't know, bro. Like, 8 out of 10. Like, how you say I think that's, like, Breaking Bad. What? No, Breaking yeah. Bad is a 10 out of 10. No, I don't think 10 out of 10. I think it's, like, 8 or 9. I've only eight seen the pilot for Breaking Bad. So what? I, I like, that's yeah, insane. First episode. Yeah. Breaking Bad is okay, anyway, one of the buddy. greatest of all time. In my yeah, life. it's pretty good. I like the show. So what, what do you guys think is the future of streaming? Do you think that Netflix, do you think Netflix has reached its peak? Because a lot of people on Wall Street are saying um, that Netflix has peaked. Um, COVID kind of accelerated their growth and that they could only go so far and they're not really going to continue to grow at the rate that they have been in the past. Do you agree with that assessment? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, was- I, I think like it's just, now there's so many more, like just like you're saying, there's so many more streaming services out there. Just supply is so high, right? And so what happens? People just diversify and like you just want to see more. Um, and so now there's more options and eventually maybe somebody will pick up like the better option. I think if they start making like some insane original content, then that's like the <laughs> only way. Because right now yeah. I, I would, I'm watching like, you know, other shows on other services, which are just better in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, than what Netflix has to offer. Um, Netflix makes really good, what's it called though? Comparable to HBO, um, like docu-series. Like their docu-series yeah. are really good quality. I will say that. Yeah. 
I think whoever makes the best original content will win Wins. the streaming war. Like yeah, if it's HBO so. Max, Amazon Prime, whoever, yeah. you know. True. It, it needs to be top level, top notch, and they should just focus on that. And I think. So you think quality or quantity wise? I think quality, it's quality. Quality, quality. quantity. Yeah. And like, I, you think one show. HBO, uh-huh. I was just going to say, like, well, Squid Game brought in so many Netflix subscribers, just that one show. Mm, that's true. like quality, right? Like, who cares if you have 10 shows that are mediocre? True. <clears throat> But like HBO, so for example, I think HBO has like top, like I've said this before, I think they have just top tier quality in general. Um, but I, I don't think they're at the level of Netflix. Netflix is they still have a like leader in terms of streaming. They're still like, yeah. the, they're still number one. I think Netflix, the whole point in the beginning was to acquire a library, right? So they started mm-hmm. like getting licensing rights to a lot of old movies. They're at a certain point in time, in my opinion, where they have enough content where they should really start to just focus on the quality and stop making i mean you know these big stars they do get they have fan bases and they do get you know audiences yeah. but i feel like did you guys see red notice i didn't yeah a lot of people it. didn't like it uh, i don't know didn't get it was, bro it was a, the rock it was like the rock bro yeah it's Ryan like Reynolds. they sell like, but you can't really keep yeah. that as a consistent like, like jenner said it's like you know squid games was really really good it, people from all over the world were watching and i yeah. think what netflix should focus on is more foreign um more like foreign markets content because India, you know, what interesting they did in India I was reading is that so they cut prices in India, actually. So going back to your point, they they so their whole strategy in the beginning in India was to appeal to the rich people in India. Basically, it was nine dollars a month in India, which is expensive, right? Janish, nine dollars a month. Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, that's a lot of money. So they were trying to make more like English Hindi content. That they'd be like more English based, and obviously upper middle upper middle class uh, yeah. demographics there speak English very frequently. And so now it's two dollars. They cut from eight dollars. The cheapest plan is two dollars, uh, and they are trying to get more foreign content going because India has a billion people. America only has so many people, right? And I think the more foreign, like Squid Games, has international appeal. You watched it. We all watch Squid Games, and I feel like they should make more foreign based content that's appealing and they should really, really, really focus on the quality of that because that's the future as the world becomes more and more globalized. And I think whoever wins the foreign content market will win the streaming game, in my opinion, at least. And India is definitely big Korea, China. I mean, I don't know about China. I agree with you, but yeah, whoever wins that, you know, that segment of the content game will probably yeah. win. True. I agree. I think that's a good note to end. Yeah. Uh, Real quick, I just yeah. want to make a note. The whole like capitalist thing that we were talking about earlier. If you watch the other podcasts, I sound extremely contradictory to what I'm saying now. Uh, I'm just it's just a point that I'm just cancel about. him. He's a socialist. So, sorry, guys, I'm not a socialist at all. I'm, I'm beyond capitalist. I'm just there's one thing like I just get annoyed about, and it's like stupid tangent. But okay, and it's the most socialist thing. <laughs> not, not I know. The but I, that's I don't the know. most. That's the most uh, liberal I've heard, Matt. Bro, it's not even liberal, man. It's like, I, mean, I just don't like inflation. I don't like it. I don't like it. And so, like, it's just annoying to me, bro. It's just extremely annoying because it doesn't. They don't like, like inflation. Makes, I mean, it's just part of it. Nobody yeah. likes it, right? It just yeah. it doesn't make sense. Like, it doesn't make sense. To, I don't want to get into this again. I don't want to get into this again. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. See you guys next week. All right, guys.